President Buhari on working visits to Lagos inaugurates landmark projects. Get our PVC. Vote and protest our vote. As election day draws nearer, campaign voices get louder. Also on the news, scarcity trail new Naira notes. Bank customers skeptical on CBN January 31 deadline. Even from DTM, my chain self. Hello, a warm welcome to NTA Network News at 9. The news today begins from Lagos, the commercial nerve center of the country. I am Adeola Komiakere. And reading with me tonight is Najatu Tijani in Abuja. Thank you for joining us. The lucky deep sea port driven by the Buhari administration's vision of bequeathing a legacy of poverty elimination through the provision of job creating infrastructure has been inaugurated. President Muhammad Buhari performed the ceremony at the commencement of his two-day state visit to Lagos, the center of excellence. State House correspondent Adamu Sambu reports. Initiated and completed under the present administration, the West Africa's deeper seaport is estimated to have an aggregate impact of $360 billion over a concession period of 45 years executed by the federal and Lagos state governments as well as private consortium the port is expected to realize over 200 billion dollars from taxes royalties and duties while creating nearly 170,000 jobs the lake deep sea port has amongst other distinctive features such as full automation thereby positioning it for quick cargo and vessel turnaround Consequently, the competitiveness of Nigeria's exports, especially agro-island products in the international market, will be greatly enhanced. So also, the forex inflow to enable Nigeria maximize the opportunities inherent in the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Mm -hmm. We can see that it's been a total combination of um, the government, labor state, and the private sector. We're happy that this is happening in your time, within your time, and it's been completed in your time as well. I did excited. The size of the vessel that we're coming here, sometimes the size of the vessel currently that at the Boti and the Papa Port. So it's a big, big, massive infrastructure, and we're really excited about that. So the fresh traffic into this country is going to generate thousands and thousands of jobs directly and thousands, hundreds of thousands of jobs indirectly. Yes. So I want to say very well to you, first, well, this is engine of the economy, not only for the makers, and also for the federal government of Nigeria. The second, well, this is the equity of investment. Mr. President, this is not law, this is not part of this investment. We need not to consider about what can we be paid in money back. We got back revenue, taxes from this project. President Muhammad Buhari also inaugurated the Lagos Rice Mill at Imota, executed by the Lagos State Government in support of the Rice Revolution Program of the Buhari Presidency. The mill has the capacity to produce 2.5 million metric tons of rice per annum. Lagos State Governor Babajide Shaolu, who guided the president on tour of the plant, said about 250,000 direct and indirect jobs will be created for Lagosians through its operations. We will be able to the to be here to commission the largest rice mill in the entire Southern Africa, and one of the largest in the world, the Lagos rice mill here in America. And this is the result of the and we talked about the position of Mr. President, who when he started his government is that Nigeria should grow what they eat and they should eat what they grow. We are happy that Lagos is the testament for that. With 2.8 million bags of 50 kg rice per annum, Lagos is ready to support the rice revolution and the food revolution in Nigeria. President Buhari described the two projects as very much in line with his administration's vision of economic diversification and food security. 
and before retiring for the day, the Nigerian leader declared open the MRS Best of Lubricant Plant, the 200 million liter plant, first of its kind in West Africa, covering the whole value chain of lubricants, will put a stop to the importation of substandard products, capital flight, and contribute to the generation of foreign exchange for the country through exports. From Lagos, Adam Musambo, NTA News. And still on the Lekki Deep Sea port. From conception to delivery, the adjective game changer has been used to describe the newly inaugurated Lekki Deep Sea port. Adeni Taiwo reports that beyond the maritime industry, other stakeholders are also excited about the huge transformative impact of the project. Just like the gathering of the Eagles in here, our stakeholders in the maritime sector converged on Lekki for the inauguration of the nation's first deep sea port by President Muhammad Buhari. By exciting centers on the changing narrative imminent in the maritime sector in the first instance and the larger economy on the other hand. It would be right to say that this project commenced and started and completed by this administration. But that is fully automated. This is the port that is fully digitalized. The implication of all of that is that for us, we are going to have a port that will serve not only diligently, not only with quality, but a port that will make sure that business is conducted here seamlessly. The location of the $1.5 billion project is Ibejileki, an agrarian community, once upon a time. Honorable Bayo Balogun, who represents the federal constituency, says the coming on stream of the project has changed not just the landscape of the area, but also their job interest. This area used to be an agrarian local government, we were fishermen and uh, uh, farmers, and today our trade have actually changed. Uh, many people are now able to go into real estate because of the value this project has actually brought to the area. Uh, various industries are springing up along this area. In fact, we are advising our children now to take relevant courses that may be to make them get into the most of these opportunities that we have around this area. Being part of history can be gratifying and that, I believe, is the feeling that is, you know, common among those who are here today to replace this historic occasion. Of course, I'm not left out. From Lucky Deep Sea Port in the Lucky area of Lagos State, I don't know time. Continues. Now, joining me live from our Abuja studio is Dr. Chijoke, is a Chiku, an economist. Hello, Dr. Chijoke. Thank you for joining us on the news. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. And yes, congratulations all the way. But what does the inauguration of a lucky deep sea port mean to Nigeria's economy? Um, for, for me, every Nigerian should uh, celebrate this particular uh, project. Um, it, it's actually going to unbundle our economy. You, you know that within that same area, we have the Dangote refinery coming up upstream. Um, we also have the intended airport coming around that area. Um, we also need to know that uh, there is a free trade zone within that area. So you see that all these are going to um, uh, unbundle themselves uh, from the particular deep sea to the free trade zone and uh, all those are going to actually um, create a lot of job opportunities for this country and uh, grow a lot, grow our economy so much. Um, you cannot imagine the amount of uh, revenue we're going to generate from this kind of project the taxes that we paid, and the ancillary services that we rendered by insurance companies, by lawyers, by transport companies. And um, it's actually going to um, reduce the pressure on the other wharfs, on the other seaports that are existing. They are Papa Wharf and other, 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 other seaports. So um, the kind of congestions we used to have around the seaports will just be reduced um, with this kind of project. And um, the size of the project is such that we have to be proud of this, and uh, Nigerians should celebrate this, actually.
Now, about uh, 360 billion naira is said to be generated within a certain period. Is Nigeria on the verge of witnessing improved trade facilitation as a result of the Lake Hill Deep Sea port? Firstly, um, our exports will be enhanced. Uh, people are going to be exporting products so, so seamlessly, and the importation also will also be enhanced. So, um, you know, the entire value chain of this particular deep sea in Lekki is going to be so humongous that we cannot imagine how that will affect our economy uh, positively. And so, um, we may not get the real impact now like, like today, but of course, over the years, we are going to be experiencing the chain effect, the positive chain effect of this kind of uh, project in Nigeria. Um, we are all part of it, as a matter of fact. You talked about unbundling the economy. Um, that area has the Dangote uh, refinery, has the free trade zone, and of course the international airport is coming on there. Now we know that uh, goods and uh, services will also um, be at its peak over there. Do you think all the um, agencies um, are supposed to work together because we need to put a stop to um, illicit um, products or goods coming into the country? Yes. Um, you know, the thing about the free trade zone is just to make sure that goods are exported out of the country um, at minimal cost. Goods are also imported into the country at minimal cost. Um, it is also necessary that the necessary government agencies should take their position right now to ensure that, um, of course, the normal standards are maintained and to ensure that we people and different individuals and groups do not abuse this kind of privilege and opportunity that we have. So I'm certain that um, the security measures are going to be taken uh, for us to actually uh, optimize the value of this kind of project um, coming into Lagos. Now, um, my, uh, my, 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 my say here is that if this has happened and is succeeding, we need to think about many other projects like this that can actually uh, unbundle the economy more so that... Um, by this year, towards the end of this year and next year, we're going to be having a robust economy that is going to be growing. In fact, the, the projections of economic growth that has been made should actually be improved right now because the projection was made without some of these things in consideration. So we're expecting that an, our economy to actually pick and uh, grow from this kind of project. And many other um, companies and institutions are going to be hovering around there because, like I said, the, ch uh, the ripple chain, the ripple effect of this um, is going to be very huge. A lot of people are going to benefit. Um, the local government chairman that spoke talked about a lot of uh, uh, property companies coming in there and, of course, a lot of other companies are going to come. So the revenue base that this is going to create is going to be very huge. OK for joining us on the news tonight, sharing your thoughts on the Lekki Deep Sea Report. Thank you so much. You're still watching the network news. Do not forget that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nca.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on the screen for updates. We shall take some messages right now and when we return, Najatu in Abuja will continue with network news. Hello and welcome to our Abuja studios on the network news on NTA. I'm Naja Atsitajani and we begin with the APC rally in Bochi, where the progressive governors promised to join forces and deliver Bochi state to the All Progressives Congress candidates in the forthcoming general elections. Musbao Nangwa have reports that President Muhammadu Buhari's presence was a big boost at the party's presidential and governorship rally in Bochi. The APC presidential campaign train was back in the northeast, and for this purpose, the 11,000 capacity Abubakauta Fire Balera Stadium received APC members and supporters, which APC says it is a show of appreciation to the party for liberating the state from the shackles of insurgency. Important beneficiaries of your administration to 
Americans who started to enjoy our position more than any other part of Nigeria. President Buhari has come knocking again, asking for Bauchi electorate to extend their love to Ashiraju. So, the leaders of the National Assembly want the Bauchi voters to reward the party and its candidates with massive votes at the polls. Ashiraju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, he stood with your brother. He stood with your son. He stood with your father through thick and thin. It is not time to reward that loyalty. Having led fight against enemies of states from the air and retired, the former chief of air staff says he is on the wrong way in civilian garb to provide new leadership. Governorship candidate and Marshal Sadiq Abubakar says he is prepared to propel the state to prosperity. By the grace of God, all adults three children of Bauchi origin, numbering about 1.4 million, will be enrolled in schools. We will also create jobs for the unemployed. And the APC says it is consolidating on past friendships and new partnerships to carry the state and deliver more dividends of democracy if returned to power at the center. With Bauchi, Miss Bao, and Rahab, and News. Earlier on, during a courtesy visit to the MAS Palace in Bochi, President Muhammad Buhari also expressed the conviction that his pre-election promise to serve Nigeria and Nigerians with a high sense of responsibility to the best of his ability has been delivered. The president also said the president also made a strong case for his worthy economic sectors to be sustained by returning the governing APC to power. State House correspondent Adam Sambu reports. The reception accorded President Muhammad Buhari on arrival at Sir Abubakar Tafawa Balewa Airport Bauchi was devoid of party affiliation, apart from ABC chief teams including the presidential candidate Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu and his roommate, a high-powered state government delegation led by Governor Bala Muhammad of the PDP also stood to be counted. And along the major streets of Bauchi, it was a massive demonstration of intense pleasure as the president arrives to personally campaign for his party's candidates for the forthcoming elections. During a courtesy call at the palace of the Emir of Bauchi, both the Emir, Relwanu Suleiman Adamu, and Governor Bala Muhammad acknowledged President Buhari's high level of acceptability, respectability, and even adoration for impacting positively on the state's economy and lives of the people. There is no place that you are relished, respected, and adored like Bauchi states. We have become a colossus in the politics of Nigeria, and Bochi is your home. Whether you are in any party, whether you are coming from anywhere, if you are in Bochi, you know we are Buharist, as I said, in Kolomani. The oil and gas exploration in Kolomani has brought shako and hope to this country within the realm of Bochi and Gombe. Is something that we will never forget. But today, Bochi has water for 50 years. It is due to our own legacy and foresight. Parties and candidates should continue to exhibit tolerance, maturity, and responsibility during this election season. It is important that we do not import the culture of violence and hatred to spoil the spirit of excitement and festivity that come in our state. President Buhari, who appreciated the continued show of support by the people of Bauchi, was however quick to show where his interest lies as his administration winds down. The next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Lola Amitidu. <laughs> The president attributed the giant strides achieved by the governing APC across all sectors of the economy to the trust, confidence, understanding and cooperation of Nigerians. I made the promise and the pledge that I will serve Nigeria and Nigerians to the best of my ability. 
I think I haven't appointed anybody. President Muhammad Buhari, who is the chairman, presidential campaign council of the governing APC for the 2023 elections, was in the pearl of tourism to ensure the election of Ashiwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu as president and Sadiq Baba Abubakar as governor of Bauchi State. From Bauchi, Adam Usambu, NGA News. Meanwhile, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, says he will pull people out of poverty if elected in the forthcoming elections. This was at a town hall meeting with traditional and religious leaders in southern Kaduna. Lois Apollo was there for NTA News. The traditional rulers of all the kingdoms in southern Kaduna are chief of Kaboros Palace. The presidential candidate promised to work with the traditional institutions in addressing the security challenges facing the country. He commiserated with them over the attacks in the area and also promised to fight poverty as a way of reducing criminality. Chief of Kagoro, Phil Bennett, appreciated Obi for identifying with the people of Southern Kaduna and prayed for leaders that will address challenges facing the country. At a meeting with religious leaders, the presidential candidate promised to prioritize education, health, and agriculture to turn the fortunes of the country. <laughs> Representatives of the two religious bodies, Apostle Emmanuel Kuru and Imam Muhammad Al Qasim, called for the establishment of Federal University of Technology and Medical Center in the zone. Prayers were offered for a free and fair elections. Earlier, the presidential candidate commissioned the zonal office of the party in Kefangcham. Lois Apollo, NT News. The People's Redemption Party, PRP, has again cleared the air over reports of its alliance with the presidential candidate of the African Action Congress for mobilizing a Congress in Kano State last week Monday. A statement by the Acting Assistant National Publicity Secretary, Mohamed Ishaq, reiterates that PRP has never formed an alliance with the AAC's presidential candidate nor other political party. The statement urges the public to disregard the reports making the rounds in the media, describing those reports as false and mischievous. Going forward, PRP advises AAC to verify its facts before publicizing activities. Meanwhile, President Mohamed Buhari will depart Lagos for Senegal on Tuesday, where he will attend the second edition of the Dakar International Conference on Agriculture. A statement by the Special Advisor on Media and Publicity to the President, Femi Adeshino, indicates that the theme of the summit, hosted by President Macky Sall of Senegal and the chairperson of the African Union, is Feeding Africa, Food Sovereignty and Resilience. There will also be side meetings to discuss delivery of food and agricultural products in some countries, including Nigeria. African heads of state and government, ministers of finance, agriculture and development will also attend the summit. President Buhari is expected back in the country on Wednesday, January 25. The federal government says it is yet to determine the authenticity of a viral report on an alleged outbreak of an unknown deadly flu from China, but remains vigilant to ensure total safety of the Nigerian populace. The Minister of Health, Dr. Osagi Hanuri, while speaking at a media conference in Abuja, said surveillance at all points of entry into Nigeria has been heightened and is advising citizens to be circumspect about such news. When there is an outbreak of any flu or disease anywhere, we hear it first from the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization has not said anything about such a flu. We also hear from the U.S. Center for Disease Control. There is nothing like that also from there. And we have not even heard anything from the Chinese people. Usually, their embassy will send somebody to come and inform us, as usual and also for port health services to be alert and awake for screening. We are doing very due diligence in checking all arrivals from outside the country. On the reported upsurge in Lassa fever in Edo State, as well as diphtheria outbreak in some parts of the country, Dr. Ehaniri explained that the federal government has been proactive with response and the necessary interventions. On our own side, have we done our own due diligence? Yes. 
every single medicine they use for treating Lassa anywhere in the country is provided by the Ministry of Health. The test reagent, the test kits, everything is provided. That's our responsibility. Every disease outbreak everywhere is given the full attention by this ministry and nothing is left that is our duty to do. But that we also expect all states to understand it's a shared responsibility where they too have their role to play in managing some of the social fallout. The ministerial briefing is a bi-weekly routine which allows agencies connected to the ministry to give updates on COVID-19 and other developments in the nation's health sector. You're watching NTA News at 9 on, NT on the network service of the NTA. Stay tuned for more reports. The race is on to phase out old Naira notes by January 31st, 2023. Yet some citizens are asking for an extension of the date to ensure the new notes go round. From Domaturu, Yunusa Suleiman reports that sensitization campaigns have been taking place to ensure compliance with the deadline, although there are pleas for an extension due to limited availability of the notes in rural markets. It is very scarce in the market. If you go to the bank, they will still give you the old currency. The deadline is almost as well, and uh, that at first is very close because we cannot make it actual. The federal government meant well, and central bank meant well for the populace, more especially the peasant. That's why they introduced this uh, cashless and we design currency. From Joss, Caleb Gochin reports that though many of the ATMs visited by NTA are dispensing the new notes, the situation is not the same in rural areas where the machines are limited and there is reliance on point of sales machines. Had the new notes. Uh, I've not seen this turn another note before, but today I can see. We have problem because no new one. The new one is not existing. It's not in South America. People are still coming to buy with the own money. You see, much of 100,000 there, you only get just two, two, two new ones, new, new notes. We probably, what is it, about a few days to go, we we'll start rejecting the, 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 the old notes in the market. In Akure, Olua Sheifumi Ademola reports that mostly 200 narrow notes are available, causing anxiety among residents as the deadline looms. Indem Kalu reports that most rural areas are yet to see the new notes. How are we going to get hold of that new one so that we will leave the old one? We have not even getting hold of the new one. Even if you go to bank today, bank will still give you the old currency. So extend it. But that if the new one is, for us, um, is uh, all over the place, then the old one that can go to bank. So that you, we, as we, the market women, we have already had the new one. So if you take the old one to the bank, you will not feel it. You will have another one to go to market. Mulari Kende Amolosho reports that the notes are also in demand but limited in supply. I still receive the old notes. Since we want to say you must collect because they, the old one is with them. We don't they don't have new one at hand now. But we are managing it towards this week. After this week we are stopping it. Right in the Federal Capital Territory, Mariam Jutupo reports that ATMs visited are dispensing new notes. Actually, it's not all. I, I feel happy and confirm that this morning I'm able to withdraw the new Naira notes from the ATM. Though not without challenges. The challenges we have is that I cannot withdraw more than 40,000 in a day. This is my first time and I was shocked when I saw my the, the guy on the other ATM. I was actually, I didn't put it to when they said no, it's a new note. I was like, wow. So it's good and I've collected it now. So, and I'm happy. With the deadline less than a week away, citizens are complaining of scarcity of the notes. President Muhammad Buhari has applauded the management of the Federal Inland Revenue Service for repositioning the nation's tax system. 
thereby sustaining the upward trajectory in revenue receipts for sustainable national growth and economic prosperity. This was when the executive chairman of the service, Mohammed Nami, presented to him the 2022 performance update report, which shows an unprecedented collection of 10.1 trillion naira in tax revenue. State House correspondent reports. We were able to generate a talking amount of 10.1 trillion naira in the year that just passed. During the closed door engagement, Mohammed Nami had told President Mohammed Jubari that the 10.1 trillion naira is the highest tax ever collected in the history of the Federal Inland Revenue Service. We now come up with various reforms internally in which we are able to uh, uh, automate our processes. Now, in the end, by June 2021, we recall that we introduced our tax bond marks, which today is a game changer in the FRS. Our collection continues to improve on an annual basis. With the tax bond marks also, today, we don't need to visit the FRS to be able to do tax learning certificate. I always share with people that statutorily, you have two weeks to, to apply for and get task learners. In the past, it takes even more than that. Today, you can use one minute to start processing and get your task learners without necessarily visiting the FRS. He said although 340 billion naira short of its target for the year under review, it is over 3.7 trillion naira higher than the 6.4 trillion collected in 2021. Before I came on board, the entire administrative process was centralized, but today, we have embedded it in a manner that we have groups working, we have departments working. As the executive chairman of FRS, I see little of even the correspondents coming in so that the system will continue to work. Staff, morale, is now second to none in this country. The unprecedented revenue collection is made up of 4.09 trillion naira from the oil sector and 5.96 trillion naira from the non-oil sector. President Muhammad Ubari described as pleasing that the service is effectively and efficiently charting a pragmatic course for sustainable growth and development of the economy on the outlook for 2023. So we are still working on the figure, but I think it's within the region of 12 trillion now. This is the second consecutive year that the service will be recording unprecedented tax collection. Jude Onifade, NT News. For more on the business circle, let's join Musa Abubakar. Thank you, Najat. Experts are driving the conversation on using artificial intelligence to carry out complex cognitive tasks and creative production. This is in a bid to promote growth and development. This was at the crux of conversation on artificial intelligence, AI, and white-collar jobs at the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in Davos. The panelists were assessing the disruptive capability of uh, artificial intelligence towards societal growth and development in different sectors. In side by side. Where I'm, I'm, I'm offloading some work to my uh, my digital co-worker and say, here is my, just continuing the example, mortgage application. You process it while I do something else. When the answer comes back, I'll, here is the next set of work. You do it while I do something else. Uh, just like we all work with a computer, 95% of us will work with our digital co-workers. That's just the future of work. But embrace it and, and do more and better writing and art than we've ever done before. It should be a time of flourishing. I also want to underscore what Genevieve brought up earlier about uh, humans. Uh, one of our natural strengths is, is flexibility, and we also talked about emotional intelligence. And machines don't have that breadth of knowledge, and so that we're going to start relying on that more and more. Let's begin the week on a positive note as investors gain 34.2 billion naira. Their share index close uh, or inch up 0.12 percent to close at 52,657.69 points a total turnover of 143 billion units of securities valued at 1.7 billion naira were traded in 4,078 deals equity capitalization closed a session at 28.681 trillion naira fbn holdings champs holding and guarantee trust holding company dominated activities in terms of volume 
That was it. The news continues with Najat. Thank you, Musa. And now for Housing Matters. 100 housing units developed by the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria have been inaugurated in Sapoto State. The houses were developed under the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria MLC TUC NECA National Affordable Housing Delivery Program for Nigerian workers. Dalhatu Abdullahi has the details. A Sapoto State 100 housing units constructed under the program comprised of 20 units of semi-detached bungalows, 40 units of two-bedroom semi-detached bungalows, and three-bedroom semi-detached bungalows. The estate is provided with internal road network, drainages, electricity, and water. The housing project is a commitment toward ensuring home ownership for Nigerian workers who are contributors to the National Housing Fund scheme. The Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria is delivering on its mandate a means of qualified support from all stakeholders. By the end of the we are not only reducing the housing deficit in the country, we are also creating jobs and tackling unemployment. Inaugurating the housing unit, Governor Amino Adira Tambwal, represented, commended the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria and other stakeholders for the housing project. He said state government donated the land for the housing unit. <laughs> In their separate remarks, Director Fulfledge Consult Nigeria Limited, Fabumo Adiola Adeni, underscored the importance of providing shelter to Nigerians at affordable rate. They expressed the commitment to supporting the mandate of Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, hence the need for state governments to support the provision of houses for Nigerian citizens at affordable price. In Sakwatu, Dalhatu Abdullahi, NTA News. Governor Mohammed Inoua Yahya says businesses must be provided with an enabling environment to thrive. This was while granting 250 million naira support to Gombe traders at the inauguration of newly elected executives of the Gombe State Interlocal Market Traders Association performed by the governor. Emmanuel Akila reports. <laughs> They heave a sigh of economic relief with 250 million naira grant to boost their businesses. Governor Mohammed Inouye Haya says Gombe State has keyed into the federal government's NGKS program designed to help restore the country's economy from the negative impact of COVID-19. In Gombe State, it is called Go Cares, with over 8 billion naira set aside to finance it. Farmers and entrepreneurs have already started enjoying it. In Gombe State, we shall spend 8.5 billion naira on workers. Already, payments have started, and farming inputs given to beneficiaries. In his inaugural address, on behalf of the executives, the re elected chairman of the association, Uba Abdullahi, thanked Governor Mohammed Inoyahaya, who he described as a business friendly governor, for always answering them when they called for support. <laughs> Members of the Village Traders Association are your children. We are proud of you. The association pledged support for the APC, which they believe will rejuvenate the country's economy if given another mandate. In Gombe, Emmanuel Akila, NTNU. The Bahari media organization BMO has described the revenue generation of 990 billion naira in the month of December 2022 as proof that the policies of diversifying the country's economy working and yielding desired results. The Federation Accounts Allocation has shared 990 billion naira among the three tiers of government for the month of December 2022. In a statement signed by its chairman, Ria Akinsiju, of 
although the Buhari administration inherited an economy, an economy which was on a downslide, with the price of oil plummeting to the lowest level, the administration has been able to diversify the economy and the country's sources of revenue. BMO therefore applauds President Muhammad Buhari for his foresight of ensuring that the country earns more revenue from taxes and related areas rather than depending on the normal economy of oil revenue with its associated unpredictable nature. Time now for more messages. Do stay tuned. Flight operations on domestic and international routes have been restored at airports across the country after a protest by staff of the Nigerian aviation handling company NACO. A resolution was finally reached by concerned parties to return to the negotiation table. NACO staff downed tools to demand an increase in salaries which paralyzed flight operations in the early hours of Monday across the country. Following the approval of the new question charges approved by the National Assembly to the NCA, it became uh, expedient for NACO to do something about the salaries of their staff. And we are paid them for they were giving us excuses. In December, we gave them an ultimatum, 14 day ultimatum, NACO and SACO, to commence this question, but they never did anything. We follow this one by a seven day old, uh, reminder. They didn't do anything this January until we gave a seven day notice of strike. That was when Sako did the necessary to invite us. So we commenced discussion with Sako. Sometime last week, but now we instead of doing the same thing, we rushed to the court to get an injunction. This is where the news ends. Thanks for watching.